got the TC in the background. We live, man. We lit. We got the brother Andre Renaissance in the building, all the way from Chicago. What's going on, brother? What up? What up? What up, man? All the way from uh, Chicago, Chi Town, uh, real estate investor. What else do you do, man? Content man. creator, author, 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 public speaker. Yep. Man, mentor the youth. We out here just, you know what I mean, growing and just, you know what I mean, really trying to run up our um our bag and not necessarily just monetarily, but just like really run up our bag, you know what I mean, when it comes to helping people, right. you know what I mean, when it comes to like uplifting the community, like everything positive, bro. Running up the bag in terms of relationships, man. How many dope relationships can you run up? Ooh. Ooh, man, at this point, like since 2020, since the pan since the pandemic started, my group of friends and network has just like skyrocketed to another level um and even my personal net worth you know what i mean just like being around you guys being surrounded by just like people that i can learn from and be influenced by like before this i was just doing real estate you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying now like i say i write books i'm speaking publicly i have online courses like i'm traveling around you know what i mean doing networking events just like that's the power of the internet and just having a big network man yeah and when you say it, and you were talking about the power of relationships and the people that you're working with and how you guys are able to create these quid pro quo situations, it makes me kind of think like, man, a lot of times we think it's about just being the richest person in the room when really it's about being in a room full of rich people. But you can start to calculate your worth based on the worth of your friends. It's like, all right, I'm surrounded by a bunch of people with money. That means I must be doing something right. Man, that means I must right. be on the right track. That means money is going to come. It's like opportunities can come just by being in the right rooms, being around the right people. What they say, um, surround yourself with five millionaires, you're going to be the six. So, yep. Like, and it's, it's real. It's yeah. true. Like, and um, since I've just, like I say, been surrounding myself with the right people and um, just like the proper network of people where I can learn from and not always be like the biggest and the best in the room, just like my entire brand has like leveled up yeah so before we get into the details oh man there's so much i can ask you about but first <laughs> intro introduce yourself to the people because we've never done this in person and so the people who are new to you might not have never heard of you give them the rundown um like the same thing that i always say when i do a podcast interview whatever my name is andre haynes i'm from the ida b wells projects on the south side of chicago um, I'm a real estate investor, content creator at this point. I'm an author, like I just told Charles, a public speaker, a mentor, all of these different things. And um, just whatever else God has designed me to be in my life. Um, I don't come from a whole lot of money or no money at all, honestly. Like I say, um, financial literacy is something that I had to teach myself. And it hasn't been an easy road, but it's been absolutely worth it, man. Yeah. So... Let's talk about the book. That's something new that was not something that we talked about before, and I don't want to miss that. So what's the name of the book? Renaissance's Five-Step Guide on Getting Your Shit Together. How long did it take you to put that, put that together? Um, Probably my whole life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much my blueprint on the things that I had to do in order to start being able to attract, you know what I mean, all of the stuff that I'm attracting into my life. Yeah. Um, it's before... I got to any money is before I purchased the property. It's like this book is about like the times when I was like mentally like down, like when I was just like really fucked up, really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life or what direction my life was going in. And um, this is the blueprint, the the five step guide on what I did to get my life in order and back on track before any of the money or anything. It was yeah. all the mindset shift yeah. first and foremost. So can I ask you what the five steps are? Absolutely. Um, step number one, self-evaluation. Um, that's the step that's typically the hardest because it requires you to look in the mirror and be like, yo, I'm a fuck ass nigga. I'm a weak ass bitch. I'm out here busting down. I'm out here thought on take care of my kids. I'm out here like, you know what I mean? Just really being just like a, a very, very irresponsible, not shit ass person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's typically the hardest conversation to have with yourself. But once you do have that conversation with yourself, you're able to identify what the issues are. And when you identify what the issues are, it's easier to go in and fix those issues. You know what I mean? And um, step two is 
understanding the power of your mind and your words because after you have that conversation with yourself where you beat yourself down you have to be able to build yourself back up and be like yes i was all of those things but at this point i can change that you know what i mean and and start speaking positivity into the universe and you'll get that back 10x yeah. you know what i mean and the power of your mind and words is very very real before you can go out and get a million dollars you have to be able to tell yourself you know what i mean and know and understand that you can attain that you know yeah. what i mean without yeah. you necessarily even having it in physical form you got to believe it first yeah um step three is are you frugal or are you fraud a lot of us tend to act like you know what i mean we got all of this money and we these big ass bosses or whatever the case may be when the whole time you actually broke yeah. you know what i mean when you really should be being frugal stop going out trying to look rich and actually go out and get rich right. you know what i mean and that starts with being frugal with your money being frugal with your decision making understanding like needs versus wants you know what i mean and um step four is after you get your, you know what I mean, money and your finances in order, um, the frugal or the fraud part, the fourth step is like building and maintaining your foundation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now you got the money, now you can kind of like start building your foundation, you can start building your savings, you can start building your investments, all of these different things. And once you do that, the fifth step is finally going out to take that leap of faith. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us are in positions where we hate our job. We don't like what we're doing every day. So now you've pretty much, you know what I mean, put this emergency fund to the side. You've saved up a nice amount of money. Now it's time for you to go out and take your leap of faith, whether it be you starting your business, whether it be you investing in the stock market, no matter what it is, it's time for you to like go out and bet on yourself at this yeah. point because you've taken all of these proper steps to get to this point. So now what? You're going to stand on the edge and look down? You know what I mean? No, jump. Yeah. So what do you think is the hardest step out of all five? I would say number one and number five, um, because like I say, the first step, self-evaluation. It's hard to tell yourself you're not where you want to be yeah. because most of us, we telling ourselves like, yo, I'm that guy. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like that's, that's the conversation you're having with yourself typically, even when you're not that guy. You know what I mean? You're telling yourself this. And um, I think the leap of faith is... Um, the step five is the second hardest because a lot of times we tend to get analysis paralysis where we'll take in so much information. We'll do courses. We'll go to seminars. We'll do all of these different things. But then when it's finally time to leap and jump and like go do what we're supposed to do, we don't. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, that's the hardest part outside of like actually like identifying I'm my own problem. Yeah. Where were you at in life when you started coming up with these principles? The bottom the bottom like it was i was at a point where i couldn't do anything but look at myself and blame myself because it was just like you a grown ass man now yeah. you know what i mean like my circumstances all of that stuff like at this point you can't blame mom you can't blame dad you can't blame the crack epidemic you can't blame the project you can't blame the city of chicago like you're an adult this is your situation what do you do about yeah. it how do you change it yeah i think that's important because what you said is something I kind of live by. It's like we can acknowledge that it exists, but we can't let it stop us. Mm. Because you can't change it. You can't go back and say, well, I'm just going to change that I grew up in the project. I'm just going to change the fact that my parents didn't do what I wanted them to do. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't change that. And I think that's really powerful for everybody who's listening to this is we all have like a struggle story. We all have whatever that might be. But it's like if you take these five steps, then you can start taking some action. Then you can get the life that you want. Absolutely. Uh, what is life like for you now that you've implemented the things from those from that book? Like, like drastically changed, <laughs> drastically changed. Um, just the just from the book. The first thing was, like I say, me saving up my money going to buy that first property. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That was my leap of faith. And um, that became my foundation. It allowed me to have all of my time. It allowed me to live for free. Because I just eliminated what my biggest bill was, which was my rent at the time. Because I bought a four-unit property, three of the units took care of the mortgage, and I was able to live for free in the fourth unit. And took care of the bills and everything. I even had a few hundred dollars left over at the end of the month, every month. And I was able to save that on top of me keeping my job for a year and a half after mm. that. And I was saved for a year and a half on top of saving all the money from my property. And um, after about a year and a half of working after I got my property, I realized, like, yo... I don't need this job no more. Yeah. Like I'm I can really be self sufficient. If I like don't live above my means and I keep living like how I'm living right now, I don't necessarily have to work here. And when I realized that, I started acting like it. Mm. 
You know what I mean? And they noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of it's kind of tough not to act like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went I went and bought a Jag. You know what I mean? Like a new Jag. <laughs> I, it was like the year I believe it was 2016. I bought like a 2015 Jag. I pull up to the job driving better cars than the owners of the business. All and they're seeing this. And mind you, this is a job where like it's telemarketing. Like I'm calling people, putting them in weak ass schools like AIU, Everest University, schools that aren't even accredited. Mm-hmm. But I can sell. I can talk. So I did well at the job. And um. This job is how I qualify for my property. This job is how yeah. I qualify to get my car. All of those things, you know what I mean? So I don't knock the job, but it just was a point where I I just outgrew it and yeah. I kind of got tired of it. And I never I never really wanted to work because I went to work after I realized that rapping wasn't working out. Mm-hmm. It was just something that I kind of felt like I had to do because I had responsibilities, children, behind on rent, certain things like that that I had to do. But taking these five steps is what like allowed my mentality to change and understand that this doesn't have to be your circumstance permanently. Yeah, yeah. This is just right now. And if you look at this as motivation and as an opportunity to grow and say, you know what, this is the place I never want to be again. All right, so what do you do to change that? Yeah. And I started looking up what people, everyday working people were doing, you know what I mean, to get wealthy. And I kept on coming across real estate in the stock market, bro. Yeah. And I just, like I say, that leap of faith, once I started taking in all of this information, I'm like, all right, cool. I got money saved up. This is like, the I, I, I took in all of this information. Now, let me go and act on it. Let me go put some money in the stock market. Let me go get my property. These are generating, these are cash, like generating assets for me. So now I'm seeing my money going up like this. And I don't have to be there to get it. Yeah. <laughs> like It's just growing on its own. Right. And every day I'm getting up, going to this job where they're like micromanaging me. Like they're listening to my calls, like coming up. Like I'm reading books to make myself better. They're telling me to stop reading the books and take the calls. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like, what the fuck? So it was just certain. It's like, dis- don't, don't rise above the yeah. job. Just stay here <laughs> and just be a little cog in the wheel, brother. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they pretty much telling me, like, no, don't go, don't go and better yourself. Stay here for the rest of your life. And, um, you know, that just never sat well with me. And after a while, you know, myself and management just started to bump heads. And they eventually just decided to let me go. And um, it was yeah. probably one of the best things to happen to me because if they didn't let me go, I would have stayed there because it was comfort. You know yeah. what I mean? So they let me go. And I realized, like, yo, I don't need this job. And that's when I started doing all of my um, content, filming, all of that kind of stuff. And that's, you know what I mean, where I am now. So the inspiration for these steps, because so church was closed for about a year and a half, like closed. So you could still go to online service. And I realized, like, a lot of my principles are Christian principles. And a lot of what pushes me to do what I do now are like biblical principles and so people will see me say things and believe things talking about faith and speaking things and calling those things to be not as though they were and whatnot and i realize those are christian principles that i've adopted into my own life so my question for you is these five principles where do they stem from i grew up in church i was raised in church i was adopted by my aunt when i was six years old and um, at the time when she adopted me, she had transitioned from like a real secular lifestyle into like a Christian lifestyle. And um, she wasn't just like a regular Christian. She was like a super Christian. Like she would go to church with a cape on. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like she would be there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday Bible study, choir rehearsal. I mean, she was one of those types. And um, I was there with her. And um, a lot of those same principles, um, you know, got instilled in me indirectly. You know what mm. I mean? Like you don't. As a kid, you don't really want to go to church. You don't want to be right. there. It's just like it's kind of annoying to you. Like, and it was to the point with me as a child, I was really talented in sports. Like, I would have to miss sports and stuff like that because my aunt didn't understand the importance of that and how yeah. far it could have took me. She yeah. like, no, God, God first. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And and it used to frustrate me and upset me a lot of times. But looking back now, I get it and I yeah. understand. You know what I mean? It was her way of kind of like protecting me and like keeping me like out of the streets or whatever yeah. the case may be. And um. And just really realizing now that it was necessary because everything that I'm doing is based around like that faith. I'm not like a crazy Christian person, but at the end of the day, I realize a lot of my beliefs and just my foundation comes from that. Yeah. What has the response been to the book since you've released it? Man, I've gotten a great response to the book. Um, I don't know how many people have actually finished it because it is still relatively new. But the people who have finished it, like my buddy Tim Jackson, um, he quit his job. Yeah. After as after he read the book, he quit his job. He was <laughs> like, crazy. "Bro, um, reading your book made me realize I was not walking in my purpose, 
and I've decided today to step away from and he like he had a really good career. Tim is the um the zoning commissioner in Dallas. Yes. You know oh. what I mean? And he just like, fuck this. Like, this ain't it. Like he sent me a message like, Man, bro, I'm inspired by your book. I'm walking away from my job next week, you know what I mean? Thank you. And I was like, Wow. You know what I mean? And um and everybody else that's read it, um, they're telling me that it's what not only them, but just young black men in general need. You know what yeah. I mean? Because ten years ago, twelve years ago, this is what I needed. You yeah. know what I mean? And um and my guy George Pitts, he gave me some of the best advice one day. Um I was talking to him of just about about my brand and building. And he was like, Man, Andre, probably the best thing you can do is be the person that you needed twelve years ago. He was like, just focus on being that person. That's a bar. You know what I mean? He's like, who did you need in your life 12 years ago? And he was like, be him. Those those people are going to find you and they're going to need what it is that you're given. So, whatever you whatever you think you need it, be that person. And um that's a good perspective to take because sometimes it's tough to once you've reached a certain level to then figure out who you need to be talking to, what mm-hmm. your audience is. Because you're just talking at a high level now instead of bringing it down and saying, okay, I know you're working a day job. I know you're probably struggling to do doom, boom, 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 boom. And then you can put yourself in the shoes of your customer. Absolutely. And um, I think that's one of the main reasons why I do so well because I'm authentically myself all of the time. And I know who my demographic is. My demographic is the people who I was. You know yeah. what I mean? 10, 12 years ago before I got my mindset in order. And I do it intentionally like i look how i look intentionally i talk how i talk intentionally i smoke weed on camera intentionally to let people know that hey you don't have to have this particular image or this particular lifestyle or any of that you can really be yourself out here and you can fucking get to the bag like Mm. it doesn't require a set image or any of that kind of stuff like that's that's bullshit you know what i mean at the end of the day and um more than anything the message that i get is bro i appreciate you for being authentically yourself. You're yeah. not out here trying to fake a front or be somebody you're not. Like, I have a series called The Landlord Life where I don't show nothing good about being a landlord. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, most people, when they talk about real estate, they're showing you the glitz and the glamour. I'm like, oh man, come get my course. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be a millionaire the whole time. I'm showing you, like, yo, I just got hit with a $33,000 plumbing issue and I don't know how the fuck I'm going to pay for this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, stuff like that is like, what I show and these are the things that you're going to be dealing with. You know yeah, what I mean? When you get yeah. into these fields, it's not just the glitz and the glamour that you see on the internet. And I used to struggle with like, man, do I really want to let these people in on my life like that? Do I really want to show them this? And it's just like, nah, this is probably some of the best shit that you could have did because yeah. it shows people the real. Like, it doesn't show like this whole internet glamorized entrepreneur thing. Like, nah, like... But at the end of the day, it's still beneficial because y'all see me wake up in the morning and trade in the stock market, smoke my weed, you know what I mean, manage my properties and don't have to go to work and answer to nobody else and still be able to live my life on my terms. Because at the same time, while I'm doing all of that, I'm jumping on planes, linking up with Charles, linking up with Henry, linking up with Lamont, going to meet with Andre Hatchett and the gang in Dallas. Just like all of these different things that it allows me to do and free up my time. Yeah. You're living the dream, man. So you've been doing a bunch of traveling. Yeah. Um. The most traveling I've ever done, man. Like this past, in the last eight months, I think I've gone on like twelve trips. Jeez. Yeah. Run, what's, what's the rundown? Give us the rundown. So, I've been to Arkansas four times. Jeez. I've been to Atlanta twice. I've been to Dallas twice. Um, I've been to New Orleans, Monroe, and Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah. Um, L.A., Houston. Uh yeah, so that's about ten, eleven trips. What was your favorite so far? Whew. So, <laughs> all right, it's two different. So we got the the meetup we did in Arkansas with our, with our big event. That was like amazing to me because I wasn't expecting all of that. Yeah, that was a lot. Um, and it turned out to be a phenomenal event when we were worried at first that we weren't going to get the crowd. Yeah, um, right, right, right. Not only did we get the crowd, but we helped change some lives. So that was the my favorite trip. And then the second one was this past week when I went to Houston for my birthday to see the love that I get from people all over the country. You know what I mean? Coming from Chicago, that's not like a 
you know what I mean, a normal thing like that. Like to see all of the friends that I've met on the internet in the past year, year and a half pop up, you know what I mean, to fuck with me and show me love, come out to eat with me, go to the club with me, like all of those different things. It just showed me that the way that I grew up thinking in Chicago and the way that my mind was trained in Chicago just ain't necessarily right. Like mm. it, it helped me get through, you know what I mean, the tough inner city, you know what I mean, or whatever the case may be. But as an adult right now, that's not the same way that I should necessarily be thinking. Some of it, because it protects me, but I have to be more open-minded to networking, building relationships, friendships, not thinking that everybody out to get me or trying to, you know what I mean, set me up. But just, you know, <laughs> just that old crazy-ass, inner-city, ghetto-ass yeah. mentality that, you know what I mean, we're programmed to have. And um, since I've kind of shaken that off, man, my relationships, like, have gotten a ton better. And like I say, just my network of people in my life have just, like, really grown. It's interesting that you say that. Um, the internet is is a really cool place, and I'll tell you why I believe it's a cool place. It's like a lot of times in person you meet people who are your friends because of proximity, yep. but you don't think the same. You kind of like might disagree on certain things. That's why you can't get them involved in real estate. You can't get them involved in the stock market. You can't yep. get involved in entrepreneurship, but they're still your friends. Yep. But then you go on the internet and you find people who actually think like you think and believe what you believe and enjoy the things you enjoy doing, even if they might be in a different state, you connect, but the mindset is the same. You're not having to pull teeth. You're not having to convince somebody to go in on a real estate deal. It's like, bro, that's what we do. Yeah. That's what we do around here. You're getting real estate deals. You don't got to convince me. Yeah. And so I think that that is really the power of the internet. And I'm grateful for that because I don't think it would have, I don't think these relationships could have, could have happened without it. Because you can't really see into somebody's mind, but you can see what they post. Yeah. And a lot of times what they post is what they're thinking. So if I can see what you're thinking, and you could, like a lot of people, they know me because they only know what I post. Yeah. If I see you in person, I'm not talking much. Yeah. And if I do talk, it'll probably just be based on what we're all talking about. It might be about sports. Yep. I'm not going to lecture you about real estate just in person. But internet, they can see who I really am. So that's really cool. Um, man, where am I going to go on that one? Where am I going to go on that one? Because I wanted to kind of break it up into segments. I wanted to talk about... You can go into real estate. So you just yeah, let's do it. Estate. Let's do it. We're going to talk about segments real estate real now. Estate, yeah. This is the real estate section, uh, real estate <laughs> segment of the of the podcast. And uh, this brother has been doing real estate for... Since 2015. Since 2015. Mm -hmm. It has set him free financially. It has allowed him to live the life that he's living now. So if you see the life he's living now, which is a very free life, it was all possible through real estate so can you take us to the beginning of your story and talk about that yeah um my very first deal was a four unit property that i said earlier um it was through a program called naca which we did the podcast on before if you're not familiar with that episode or if you haven't seen or heard that episode go check it out um and naca is a program that allowed me to purchase my first property with no money down I walked away from the closing table with a $5,000 check, and I was able to keep all of my own money, which was, at the time, it totaled out what I walked away from the closing table with, with about twenty twenty one thousand dollars $21,000. And with that, it allowed me to start investing into the stock market. And um, that stock market money grew into a nice amount, and I was able to take that money and purchase a second property with it. And um, just real estate has allowed me to just like have more time to focus on the things that I need to help me grow as opposed to being at someone's company helping them grow. Right. You know what I mean? Um, because at the end of the day, like I told you, when I was trying to read the books and really educate myself, they were trying to pull me away from that and get me to take phone calls to make them more money. You know what I mean? And real estate allowed me to open up my eyes and see that, yo, this shit is all a game and you playing it wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you got to put yourself on the other end where you're the person that's getting the money and you're the yeah. person that's getting paid. And that's what real estate allowed me to do. Yeah. So instead yeah. of me paying rent every month, I started to get paid rent every month. Instead of me going to work for somebody else every day, it allowed me to start my own businesses and generate the amount of money that I need and get 100% of whatever it is that I'm selling as opposed to me making you... Ten million dollars and you paying me thirty thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I know I was hitting bonuses. I was making hella sales. I was doing all of this stuff. But at at the end of the year, my net pay was probably twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars after taxes and everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, it just wasn't really worth it. And I'm doing that in stock options. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just like in one day. You know what I'm saying? So like, 
just certain stuff, man, like you realize. And what do they say? When you know better, you do better. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, that's, that's, sim- it was that simple for me. Yeah. So, um, let's talk about the NACA program because I, I know a lot of people, they might want to get a property, but they might not have down payment money, especially if they live in an expensive market. Yeah. Um, do they have NACA? Well, what's the NACA program in general? Uh, Neighborhood Assistance Corporations of America is what NACA stands for. And NACA was, um, designed in uh, the late 80s, early 90s to combat illegal real estate practices like redlining and just like other um, racist practices that were, you know what I mean, going on in the real estate field. And it's uh, designed to help close the wealth gap and um, balance out the wealth in neighborhoods. Yeah. So, for example, they will let somebody like myself who wasn't making a ton of income at the time, um, didn't have much, they will let me go buy in a, in a rich neighborhood. Yeah. But they won't allow a rich person to buy in a richer neighborhood. A wealthy person will have to buy in a median or lower income neighborhood. Like I said, they're trying to balance out all of the neighborhoods so there aren't poor neighborhoods and rich yeah. neighborhoods. They want everything to be the same. So they want rich people living in poor neighborhoods. They want poor people ri- living in rich neighborhoods. Interesting. Like, balance everything out. And um, I found out about the program through a, a mentor of mine, a big sister. Her name is Kiyoki. I always get Kiyoki her props because she's the one who put me on the program. And um, she told me, she's like, hey, listen, I know you said you want to get a house, but fuck that house. Consider getting a, <laughs> consider getting a multi-unit. Get a multi-unit. You get a multi-unit, go do it through the NACA program. That's the, that's the step that we skip a lot of times. We talk about real estate buying a home, but we don't talk about the kind of home that you bought. Yes, sir. And that's how it sets you up. It's not just the fact that you like went out there, no, no down payment, none of that. It's like, no, you took your no down payment, took it, and created some income with yes, it. Yes, sir. That makes a difference. Yeah, and then, too, not only at this point do I have income, I have a ton of equity in their property. You know what I mean? By me purchasing it back when I bought it, I bought it at a great number. I got the interest rate down to 2.5%. And at this point, like I said, I paid three hundred and sixty grand for the property. Right now, it's worth about five forty. You know what I mean? So I'm almost up to $200,000 in equity in a six-year time span. Man, so imagine, and, imagine you just keep it forever. Yeah. And not only that, it's cash flowing every yeah. month. So you got that equity on top of the cash flow that it generates every month. That's what I was going to ask you. You paid 360 for it. Have you paid down some of the principal? It sits down to like 280. Yeah, so yeah. that's even more equity yeah, than you're quoting. Yeah. You're doing, you doing better than you, than you, than you <laughs> think than you're I doing. Think I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, and this is what I, I shared with you on a live the other day, um, I, though I'm sitting on all that equity, I can't even access it right now. Um, because I've been filing my taxes the wrong way. That's a, that's a gem, um, that everybody on this, uh, on this call. What's um, the gym? What's the gym? Man, stop claiming broke. Like that shit, that's po people shit. Like, I mean, when you have a business, you're an entrepreneur, man, show income, pay those people, whatever percentage that is so that you can go access more money through your business and with your business. Right now I'm sitting on 200, $300,000 equity across my properties and can't access it because when the bank go look at my taxes, it say I'm broke and ain't making no money. And they like, all right, cool. We'll give you this money, but how you going to pay it back? Right. You know what I mean? So that's the whole thing. So like, man, when you are filing your taxes and you have an entrepreneur, that's nigga shit. Stop doing the nigga shit where you just showing you ain't making no money at all. It's cool because it allows you to not have to pay, but at the same time, it's just kind of like you can't get anything yeah. because you broke on paper. You say you broke. You can't technically go in and get nothing. The bank ain't going to give you no money. The credit union ain't going to give you no money. A hard money lender probably ain't going to give you no money just because everybody is going to ask you for your tax returns. Right, right, right. I don't right, know right. anybody who's going to lend you money without asking you for your tax returns. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so what what tips do you have for people who are looking to uh, capitalize on the NACA program? Man, hire your shit in order, just like on anybody else. It's no different than any other, you know what I mean, lender or first-time home buyers program. You know what I mean? Hire your T's crossed and your I's dotted. You know what I mean? The benefits of the NACA program are... The low interest rate, the interest rate buy down, the no closing costs, they pay for your attorney and your agent, no PMI, which in all of these little percentages, the PMI, they the closing up. costs, they add up to thousands <laughs> and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars over a 30 year term. A little a little bit of percentage on a lot of money is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> That's why a lot of times when you hear people like, oh, yeah, he got. 10% of a $600 billion deal, he ain't mad about that. Like, that's a lot of money. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when 50 Cent got all of that money from that vitamin water deal, he got, like, a small percentage, but it ended up being, like, $400 million. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's how we got to look at stuff. Even, like, 
when we talk about like stock options and gains and profits, like stop looking at the number, look at the percentage, like look at the right. percent, like that's that's what you need that's to focus on. Important. That's the most percentage. important because at the end of the day, you're not gonna get a hundred, two hundred, even fifty percent from investments most times and we get so caught up in looking at the number that it's just like no nah, pay attention to that percentage when you yeah. get to a certain percentage man get out that trade yeah you know what i mean because where else are you going to get 100 200 300 percent right right it doesn't exist um but you have found ways to still do real estate despite the the, the hang-ups absolutely and you're doing a, a flip with the brother henry man just like again that goes back to my network um in addition to me buying and holding um, I just got my first flip deal with my buddy Henry because I couldn't access the money that I wanted to access to go buy more property. So I'm like, all right, cool. I got a little cash from when I was trading stock options and just like, you know what I mean? Sitting on cash, like I just always save my money or whatever the case may be. How can I utilize this? And I got friends who are in the real estate industry who are doing things totally different than me. They're using totally different strategies. And um, I reached out to one of them, my guy Henry, and I'm like, hey, look. This is my situation. You know what I mean? I want to start scaling in real estate, but I don't have the income to show or whatever the case may be. I know you're doing this. How can I be a part of it? Um, we talked about it. We worked out a legit plan. And um, we just got our first flip closed probably three weeks ago. And we're going to sell it probably for almost double the amount uh, in another month. We can mess around and record two episodes today. We will not even got to record just one. Man, keep it going. So we talked about the book. We talked about real estate. Um, talk about the merch next. We're talking about the merch next. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about so. Uh, we're going to go for another five to ten minutes, wrap it up, and then we're going to do a whole other episode. We're just going to start. You got to double down on the content when you can. Man, I'm telling you, bro. Like, <laughs> it's so necessary. Man, um, 10X, we're working on the Saturday. I was, um, I was, uh, been doing a lot of research into the Jewish culture. Not really a lot of research. I've always kind of been impressed with what they do. Yeah. And um, they don't work Sundays, but they work Saturdays. And a lot of folks don't work Saturdays, man. So if you work six days a week, even if you shut everything down completely on Sunday, imagine those Saturdays start to add up, man. You see Chick-fil-A? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Chick-fil-A, one of the best comp- I think it's like the best fast food restaurant and they don't work sundays they don't work sundays bro it's something about adding margin to your life that allows you to crush it when you are on it's like that's what i try to do where that's why i come to the office i come to the office to work when i'm supposed to be working so i'm not watching tv when i'm supposed to be working or yeah. drinking when i'm supposed to be working yeah. or playing with my son when i'm supposed to be working so then when i do go home and it's time to be a dad i'm just 100 dad so. so you got all the work out the way yeah so Man, real estate. Oh, I was going to ask you, how did you guys find that deal? Was that a deal that you found through your direct mail marketing? Or did he already bring the deal to the table? No, no, no. So this is is how we set it up. I won't get into the percentages that we split or whatever the case may be, but this is how the deal was set up. I reached out to Henry and was like, hey, man, this is what I would like to do. Um, I know you do 100% deals, and this was essentially you doing me a favor. So what I'll do is I'll take less money. I don't want to do a 50-50 deal because you're essentially bringing me in on whatever it is you're doing and cutting yourself out. You know right, I mean? right. you don't need me. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Like you have a system in place already. I'm just asking to be a part of your system. So he was like, look, I actually don't have a problem with that because like you like my little bro and right. I want to see you do do well. But this is what we'll do. I do have some um, some expenses, but they're small expenses. You just take over what my expenses are, which are the mailing list, and the actual mailers so like i'm paying for stamps Mm. and i'm actually paying to generate the list and compared to actually purchasing a house that's pennies (laughs) that's pennies and um the way henry has his deal set up he gets 100 percent financing from the bank Mm -hmm. so he doesn't typically come out of money unless it's for those things so he's like you take care of that and it's a it's a no-brainer because now he doesn't spend any money and he gets 70 80 percent of a deal yeah you know what I'm saying? So that's better for him now so, yeah it's better so for it, everybody it worked out, for, it worked out yeah. for both of us because now i go from now i'm able to get a certain percentage of a deal 20 30 percent of a yeah. deal as opposed to zero and me just sitting on capital yeah. now i'm using my capital to make more money and i'm learning the flip game at the same time but i think the gym there is you didn't just come to the table with your hand out yeah you came to the table and you added value you came to the table and you took something off of his table or off of his plate rather 
And for people who are who are watching this and you have somebody that maybe you want to do business with, find out how you can give them something. Don't just show up trying to take all the time. Show yeah. up. Tell me you want 50%. 50%? Right. I'm, I, I can do 100% without you. Why the fuck would I give you 50%? And not only did I say that, I'm like, yo, in addition to that, you know, I won't have a problem filming content yeah, for us. Cool. Like, all yep. of those yep. different things. Like, so when we do find property, you know, I'll walk through with my camera. I'll be the person to edit it because these are things that you don't do. These are yeah. not your strong points. You a, you a flipper. You a real estate guy. Like, I'm into real estate and I do content creation, yeah. all of these things. So, be it'll huge, be better man. for the brand. Like, That'll yeah. be huge for his brand. Absolutely. When you Absolutely. think about it, like, like, if you don't document the process... It's like a wasted opportunity, yeah. man. If you're not creating content, but you're still living life, you wasted that trip. Yep. yep. Because yeah. it's an opportunity for you to show people and educate people on what it is that you're doing. And it don't cost you nothing to do it. It's nothing just you all. pulling out your phone, walking through a property, showing them what you're doing. And at the same time, they're learning. Yeah. One of the things that, that some people might be uncomfortable with is it might be kind of awkward to be seen walking around with your camera. Yeah. What do you think about that? I don't give a fuck. Right. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about that shit. Like, I, I stopped caring what people talk about me a long time ago, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, and when I stopped caring, that's when things started going well. Like, that's a bar. Like, it's just like, why do you care about what people who aren't affecting your life think? Like, it's a random ass person walking down the street looking at you because you got a camera. Fuck them. Right. They're not stopping nothing. They ain't putting no money in your pocket, none of that. You know what happens most times when the people see me with a camera? Yo, what you do? Yeah. You got any cards? Man, you want to do some pictures of me? Can you come do an event for me? It end up making me more money. So, yeah. for example, in October, me, Lamont, and Henry went to uh, the Bigger Pockets conference. Mm -hmm. And I just had my camera out shooting some content. One of the keynote speakers at the conference saw me with my camera and was like, hey, look, I'm speaking in 30 minutes. Can I pay you to shoot some photos and some videos of me? Not only did I do the photos and videos of them, they paid me and they just built a relationship for next time. They're like, will you travel to do this? Like, And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll travel to do this. So now they just open up another door for my media company to make money. Yeah, yeah, that's huge for so many reasons. It's, um, man, there's a lot to take from that statement. Because it's not just about you creating content. It's not just about you getting paid for the content, but you're also now making connections with like somebody who's on stage. Yes, sir. Who has influence, who's yes, a sir. keynote speaker. Yes, sir. Who knows other people who have influence yes, who's going to refer you out there. And, and the only reason why you got, not the only reason, but a reason why you got that opportunity is because you're willing to just be out there, not caring what anybody else thought. And it attracted other opportunities to you. And so when people don't do something because it's uncomfortable, they don't do something because they don't want to be seen doing something. Yeah. It's like, what are you like? We're all aiming at this. Your goal of that content was X, but you got Y, Z, Q, R, S, T, U, V. All yep. that other stuff got to add it because you just put it out there. Yep. Man, we're going to hit the wrap up questions and then we're going to record episode two. First question is, what does wealth mean to you? Wealth means to me freedom, man. Freedom, just like being able to do whatever the fuck I want when the fuck I want to. Like, I love the fact that I can do that. Like, I wake up in the morning, like I say, I check my stock portfolio, roll me a joint, go downstairs, edit some videos, all this shit in my drawers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to, like, front or uh, sit in front of a Zoom screen with a half a suit on, just like none of that kind of shit. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like the freedom, like, to be able to, like, to. Go to my kids, like, games or whatever at 3.30 in the afternoon, like, after school. Like, they may have a volleyball game or a cheerleading tournament. I can make it. Like, I don't want, well, I'll try to make it when I get off work. I don't get off work till 5 o'clock. It's like, no. Nah, it's like, it's whatever I want to do, I can do it. Man, Man I want to go to Atlanta on a Wednesday to see my guy film the Rants and Gems podcast. I can do that. I want to come out here. I can do that. Like, it's just, like, certain things that this shit and this lifestyle allows me to have, bro, that... I just wouldn't be able to have, and that's what I consider well. It's not about a number amount. Right, right, right. It's about the time, freedom, and just being able to do whatever you want that makes you happy for me. 100%. 100%. Um, what do you think sets apart successful, I don't even know what to call it, like successful people from those who give up, fail, and never get started? One moment. Shut up, Siri. Um, the fact that we keep going. Like, regardless of what's going on, like, we keep going. Like, that's, and Nipsey Hussle said that, like, that's the only difference between anybody that's successful and somebody that's not. Like, we kept going. We were persistent. We didn't let just the bullshit stop us or shut down our idea. Like, all right, you know what? 
this ain't gonna work out and it's the same thing i heard somebody say this before i know where i heard this at, but it was a great example like when a baby starts trying to walk like when they when they start falling they don't give up they keep yeah. trying to get up and they right. keep on trying to walk and then after a few months next thing you know the baby's walking the baby's running right and it's the same thing with business like initially you're gonna fall you're gonna stumble like it's not gonna be like you're gonna hit the ground running but over time you're gonna get better and who's to say like you may end up becoming a fucking world class athlete. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Imagine if a baby gave up when they were one years old at walking. Michael Jordan wouldn't be Michael Jordan. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, right. you just don't know who you're going to become. That's why you got to stay consistent and stay persistent, like, to get to where you're trying to go, man. Like, yeah. And a lot of people, they end up giving up. Like, if they do a, you know, a drop or a launch and it don't make a million dollars the first time, shit, it might not make no money the first time. You know what right. I mean? But you learn, you know what I mean? And you progress from that. Like, take the lessons from that and you go from there. You know what I mean? And I think most people aren't willing to do that. 100%. Like, once they feel like they haven't hit a home run, they quit. Yeah. What's your favorite business or real estate book? It's that poor dad. Okay. <laughs> it's because it just, it just changed my whole perspective on everything. Um, I know it's cliche and it's probably like the top choice for everybody, but yeah. it is. I ain't going to lie. Like yeah. that. And um, I think the second one, as far as business, and um, it's probably Crush It by Gary B. Okay. Because okay. it taught me about internet business and how to like build a brand. And that's, and Gary V is who I got my don't give a fuck attitude from. Because he always says that don't give a fuck about the likes, don't give a fuck about the views, just put out the content and the people who are supposed to get the content will eventually get it. It's on you to stay consistent though. Right, right, right. Man, where can they find the book? Um, you can go to my website, uh, www.therenaissanceu.com. You can click the link in my bio on my Instagram page, my Twitter, my Facebook. Um all on my personal sites. I haven't done like Amazon and stuff like that because I'm not really with splitting 30, 40, 50% <laughs> of like my profits and shit like that. Yeah. I try to figure out ways to where I can get 100% of everything. Um, and that's the same thing that I did with my merch. Um, just went and bought my merch in bulk so I can get 100% of everything instead of me instead paying of like, like these crazy ass prices. You yeah, know what I mean? For like print for yeah, and all those yeah, things. Yeah. And oh. drop shipping is cool and shit. Like if you ain't got no money, but. I'd rather pay up front and yeah. I get that, that, that bulk discount. Where can they find the course? Uh, same thing on my Instagram, man, or my website. Uh, I have a combo course, Navigating NACA, where I teach you guys how to go through the NACA program, what to use the NACA program for, how to take advantage of the NACA program. And also, I teach you just about real estate in general, like um, how to predict market cycles, how to analyze neighborhoods, um, how to know... Um, how to find if a neighborhood has good amenities for the tenants, just like all of these different things that I teach in my course. It's over four hours worth of content, over 30 video modules. That and the Na Navigate NACA combo course are probably about six hours worth of content, and I'm selling them for under 100 bucks most times. So we have all the links to that in the show notes. Yeah. It's so funny because what I need to do is go to the link tree, click every single individual link in the link tree, add that to the show notes. That's what <laughs> so, I'm going to do. It's crazy because my link tree got some of your links in there. Yeah. I still like um, promote the options course and all of that stuff too. Because And it's crazy like for a little while, people thought I was a stock market guy yeah. because I was doing so good. And I had to kind of like dumb down with that because that's not what my lane was. Like my lane right. was initially like NACA in real estate. Yeah. And then, um, like I said, once I started doing so well and in, in stock options and like talking about the stock market people like started coming to me for stock market advice i had to like shut that shit down because <laughs> it just wasn't my lane and it wasn't what i was trying to do mm -hmm. respect that respect that um this has been another episode of the millionaire talk show and uh we're just gonna continue to drop this game give you guys information talking to people who are financially free who are on their way and or already are crushing to live in the dream man if it's, it's a lot of people that wish they lived the life that this brother lives um, just out here, just flying on a plane every other week whenever he wants to go anywhere. He's just there. So shout out to that. Shout out to uh, people who are going to be following in his footsteps. And they can do so if they get his book. So make sure you guys get that book. I know um, it, it is affordable. Seems like it's, it's a, free. Oh, it's free. God damn it. It's free. It's a free book. Five-step guide on getting your shit together for free. Get it for yourself. You know somebody coming home from the joint. You got a little teenage little brother or sister or something trying to figure it out, man. This is for all ages, ethnicities, and backgrounds. A free book. You can't beat that. My name is Charles Oglesby, also the top millionaire, and this is it for episode Andre Renaissance Part 1.